Susan Brownwell Anthony was a woman who has had a big impact on society as we know it. She pushed for women's rights by giving speeches, gathering signatures for petitions, protesting, and even getting arrested for her cause. Without her, many things in life would not be the same as they are now. She is a major reason as to why women have more rights and are equal to men today. Others look upon her as a hero for women of all ages. Susan Brownwell Anthony was born on February 15, 1820, in Adams, Massachusetts. From a young age, Susan believed uh, everyone has equal rights because she has a, had a Quaker belief. Throughout her life, Anthony was an activist and a reformer who fought for her equality by serving as president of a women's rights association and even getting arrested for illegally voting in the 1872 presidential, presidential election. She played a pivotal role in the women's rights movement, ultimately helping to break down the barriers that stood in the way of women's suffrage. She grew up in Adams, Massachusetts, the daughter of Daniel Anthony, a cotton mill owner, along with his wife, Lucy Reed Anthony, who worked for the Massachusetts government. She grew up in a politically active family who worked to end slavery as part of the abolitionist movement. In 1845, her family moved to Rochester, New York. Susan began attending boarding school in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1837. She left and began working as a teacher after growing debt forced her father to sell his business. And, and that's the reason why the family had to move to, to a farm near North Rochester, New York. After teaching, she returned back to Rochester to help for her family and met up with Frederick Douglass and William Lloyd Garrison. They inspired her to have a bigger voice and join the abolition activist to solidify herself as a big member of the anti-slavery movement. She had speeches in public when women weren't even supposed to talk when not spoken to. In 1848, a group of women held a convention in Seneca Falls, New York. It was the very first women's rights convention in the United States and began the suffrage movement. <clears throat> Her mother and sister attended, but she did not. In 1851, Anthony met Elizabeth Cady Stanton. They became good friends and would later work together for over 50 years fighting for women's rights. They traveled the country, and Anthony gave speeches demanding that women be given the right to vote. Sometimes she risked being arrested for sharing her ideas in public. Anthony was good at strategy. She had discipline, energy, and the ability to organize made her strong and a successful leader. This was one of her good qualities she would use to overcome the women's rights barrier. One of her quotes was, I shall earnestly and persistently continue to urge all women to the practical recognition of the old revolutionary maxim. Resistance to tyranny is obedience to God. This quote really shows how much of a leader that she was and how she used it to win the battle for equality. She co-funded the American Equal Rights Association. They became editors of the association's newspaper, The Revolution, which helped to spread the ideas of equality and rights for women. She would lecture and raise money for publishing the newspaper to support the suffrage movement. She was admired by, by many, but also hated by others. She was admired by women for being brave and standing up for their rights. She was hated by certain males because they believed they had more power and wanted to keep it that way. When Congress passed the 14th and 15th Amendments, which gave voting rights to African-American men, Anthony and Stanton were angry and opposed the legislation because it did not include the right to vote for women. Their belief led them to split from other suffragists. They thought the amendment should also should have given women the right to vote. 
they formed the National Women's Suffrage Association to push for a constitutional amendment giving women the right to vote. This is an important step towards women standing up for themselves and proving that they should have a voice in the matter. Unfortunately, in 1872, Anthony was arrested for voting. She was tried and fined $100 for her crime. This made many people angry and brought national attention to the suffrage movement. In 1876, Anthony led a protest at the centennial of our nation's independence. She gave a speech, Declaration of Rights, written by Stanton and another suffragist, Matilda Jocelyn Gage. Men, their rights, and nothing more. Women, their rights, and nothing less. Susan B. Anthony broke the barrier that is oppression and gave hope to all women that may have lost their spirit and will encourage others to strive to do the best that they can. Her impact on this country really shows in many big spots we have today. As of January 2020, there are 26 women serving in the United States Senate, 17 Democrats, and 9 Republicans. The highest proportion of women serving as U.S. Senators in history. Susan has paved the road for many women to spread equality and gain confidence. As of November 2019, there are 101 women in the U.S. House of Representatives, making women 23.2% of the total U.S. representatives. Among those who were able to go far with the help of Susan B. Anthony is Hillary Clinton. As First Lady of the United States, Hillary Clinton has been a trailblazer for women in politics. Having come closer to being nominated for president by a major party than any woman before her, Senator Clinton has encouraged women to join the political process and pursue their dreams. Champion of temperance, abolition, and the rights of labor, and also equal pay for equal work, Susan Brownwell Anthony became one of the most visible leaders of the women's suffrage movement. Anthony paved the way for women and was a role model for young girls, and her actions showed how strong women really are and how they are equal to men. Anthony died on March 13, 1906, 14 years before women were given the right to vote with the passage of the 19th Amendment. Even though Susan B. Anthony was not alive to see her hard work finally pay off, she at least knew that she had done right by all women with her accomplishments. Woodrow Wilson was the president at the time. A quote from Susan B. Anthony says, No man is good enough to govern any woman without her consent. Just think what the world would be like today without Susan B. Anthony. If she wasn't there to inspire women to stand up for themselves, then the way we live today could be completely different, all because of one person. And that that is breaking barriers with Susan B. Anthony. Some inspirational and powerful things Anthony has said. There will never be another season of silence until women have the same rights men have on this green earth. This is also a quote that we used in one of our paragraphs. No man is good enough to govern any woman without her consent. Another There will never be complete equality until women themselves help to make laws and elect lawmakers. After saying this, this proves Susan B. Anthony was a deeply opinionated and educated woman in a time where they cleaned and did not have a voice in public matters like elections.